In this video, we're going to check out my Commodore Colt PC computer. It's basically an IBM compatible with an 8088 processor that was produced by Commodore in the early 80s. Sit back, relax, and let's jump right into it. A little history about the Commodore PC line of computers. In 1984, Commodore signed a deal with Intel to second source manufacture the Intel 8088 CPU used in the IBM PC, along with a license to manufacture a computer based on the Dynalogic Hyperion. From my research, it's unknown whether any of those systems were ever produced or sold. But in 1987, the first model was released, the PC-10, which you see here, and it sold for $560 US, and it did not come with a monitor. Just got the computer and the keyboard. They were sold alongside Commodore Amiga, Commodore 64C, and the 128 lines of home computers by Commodore. The PC-10 is comparable in the market to the blue chip PC, leading edge Model D as in David, and the Tandy 1000 line of PC compatible computers. Speaking of Tandy 1000s, in a future video I will have some videos showing my Tandy 1000 TX computer. So if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe, ring the bell for future notifications. And if you like what I'm doing on my channel, I have a link to my Patreon down in the description. You can support me for as little as a dollar a month and get early access to my videos. All right, enough of the jibber jabber jab. Let's get into some of the details about my machine. Here we got an up close look at the Commodore Colt keyboard. You will notice it looks like an IBM Model F, as in Frank. It's basically a clone of that keyboard with the uh, Commodore badge right there. Got the function keys on the left, standard QWERTY keyboard here in the middle, and the 10 key off to the right. For the machine, let's pan up a little bit and zoom in like so. We got the Chicken Lips logo here. Two 360K disk drives. This is drive A, this is drive B. The Commodore Colt badge here. Two indicators, this is power and this is for hard drive. Next, we're going to uh, show you some ports and things on the machine. Hey kids, don't try this at home. Propping up your Commodore Colt PC by a cardboard box so you can show off your keyboard port and your reset button. So yeah, right here is the keyboard port where you plug in the keyboard. It is on the side as opposed to on the back. This is a reset button. And here is what the uh, connector looks like for the keyboard. It's just a standard XT keyboard connector. So you can use this on other XT machines. And yeah, it would just uh, plug in right there. And again, the reset button, got a screw here and a screw here. Those come out and there's two on the other side to take off this lid, which we'll do momentarily, but I'm gonna show you to the back of the machine. But before I do that, I need to get this off of this cardboard box before it falls and something horrible happens. Here is the back of the machine. Yes, I'm still using the little cardboard box to prop it up. However, I don't have it on its side, making the machine do a full-on Evil Knievel wheelie, so it's a little bit safer, but I don't recommend you do this. Um, it's what I had on hand, and I'm using it. So, power switch, where you plug in your power cord, vents for the fan on the internal power supply, mouse port, and with that, you can use the Amiga mouse, you cannot, from my understanding, use a Commodore 64 or 128 mouse. Your mileage may vary, but definitely research it before you go just plug in any mouse in there. But again, from what I've read, an Amiga mouse is fine. We've got a color composite port here, which is pretty cool. So you can hook it up to a modern TV, flat panel, whatever. Um, we've got the RGBI port here, which is basically CGI little dip switch block here and it tells you what the positions of the switch do 40 column 80 column things like that serial port parallel port and what appear to be four expansion bays but spoiler this machine only has three ISA slots not four and you'll get to see that when I open up the machine in just a moment 
I've gone ahead and removed all six screws, two on each side, two on the back, and removed the lid to the Commodore Colt. Something to note, if you're going to do this yourself, after you remove the six screws, before you slide the lid off, you want to make sure to push in the reset button on the right side so it clears the hole before you slide off the metal case. So if you remember, here's the case, there's the hole right there, you just want to use your finger and kind of push that in, and as you slide it up, it'll clear it, and you can just lift it right off, and all is well, and you will not shear off the reset button. Here we can see the inside of the machine. Right here are the three 8-bit ISA slots. Remember on the back there were four slot panels, but there's actually only three ISA slots, so Commodore must have used a generic case to put their board in. Uh, right here is the 64K RAM. Here is where the hard drive would go, which I do not have. We've got the two 360K floppy drives here, one on top, one on the bottom. The 75 watt power supply, which is plenty of power to power everything that this machine can do. Right here is the 8088-1 CPU. And behind there is a socket where you could put an 8087 math coprocessor. Something to note about this machine, it comes with three modes a standard mode, a turbo mode, and a double mode. And what that does is in standard mode, it is a 4.77 megahertz 8088, you know, standard run-of-the-mill stuff. And if you want to get a turbo mode, which would take it up to 7.16 megahertz, you would press Control alt t as in turbo, and it will on the fly turn it to 7.16 megahertz. If you want to double the speed to 9.54 megahertz, you do Control alt d as in double to get the 9.54. And if you want to get back to the standard, Control alt s back to 4.77 megahertz. Now that you know a little bit about the basics of this machine, let me put the cover back on, hook up a screen, and let's power it up. All right, I've got a small composite color LCD hooked up to the uh, Commodore Colt. Got the power plugged into the machine, the keyboard's plugged in. Let me turn on the monitor here. Monitor on, power up the machine, and we will see it boot up here momentarily. Commodore PC BIOS Rev 4.35, 1987 Commodore Electronics. It's counting up the RAM of 640 KB. It'll do that twice, and then you're going to hear the little chirp, chirp, chirp from the little piezo speaker that's built in. Hard disk not found, because there's no hard drive inside. Now it's saying boot disk failure. Type any key to retry. So what I'm going to do is grab my legit MS-DOS 5.0 floppy here, disk 1 of 5. I'm going to go ahead and stick that in the drive. And what I'm going to do is just press any key. And you will see it starting to load the, uh, the drive there on drive A. I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause here for a moment and let it load. It's going to take a minute. And then I'll bring you back once uh, the boot screen is up. And we're back. We are now at the Microsoft MS-DOS version 5.0 Welcome to Setup screen. If I had a hard drive in here or an XT, the IDE Compact Flash drive, I could go ahead and start installing DOS 5.0. I don't have either of those installed in the machine, so what I am going to do is go ahead and exit from the floppy. Or I'm sorry, exit from the setup here. F3 to exit. Disk is in the drive, yes. It's going to take us to the A prompt. So I want to show you once again that the A drive is fully working. So I'm going to go ahead and type DIR, watch the activity light. It's loading the directory from drive A. Let's go ahead and show you that drive B is also working. So we'll put the disk in drive B. We will switch to B. 
watch the activity light right here. I'm going to go ahead and type DIR return. And you will see that drive B is loading. So yeah, at this time, I would like to give a shout out to my Patreons. Ooh, shout out to my Patreons. Your name here, there's my Patreon link, patreon.com forward slash geek with social skills. There is a link in the description. I want to thank you for watching this video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, click the thumbs down twice. Comment below. Thank you for watching. Have a great day, and we'll see you in the next video.